Let's look at some of the most common instrumentation faults in industry, as well as how to diagnose and fix them. The faults we're going to look at will be on one of the most common type of instrumentation loops you'll find across industry, a 4 to 20 milliamp process transmitter. The transmitter could be a temperature, pressure, level or flow instrument. Here is the configuration of the type of loop we'll be fault finding on. The field transmitter will be connected to the process, maybe by small bore tubing or directly in pipework or a vessel. The two wire transmitter is going to pass through a local junction box and onto a multi-core back to a marshalling cabinet, likely in an equipment room. In the marshalling cabinet, the loop will have an input isolator or barrier and then the loop will be terminated into a PLC input card. The process variable will then be displayed on a HMI or human machine interface that a plant operator will be monitoring. This is fairly representative of what you might find out there on various sites across different industries. The typical 4 to 20 milliamp loop may fail in a few different ways. The common faults the operator may report are an instrument may read higher or lower than the operator expects the process condition to be. An instrument may fail by going over the 100% range value of the transmitter or under the 0% range. Process instrument reading might be frozen over long periods of time, meaning the operator doesn't trust the value that they are reading. Even though there are only a few different ways the transmitter can show that there is an issue to the operator, there are lots of different causes of these faults. I'm going to cover some of the most common types of 4 to 20 milliamp loop failures that are common to all electrical transmitters. Unusual or unexpected process conditions. As you will find out as an instrument technician, Often, a reported instrument failure isn't a failure at all. Unusual process conditions, such as higher or lower pressures or levels, may lead an operator to report a fault. You will often test the instrumentation to find it is operating correctly, that the problem is process related. Always try to work with your plant operators to discount any unusual process conditions that may have led to the perceived fault before diving in with fault finding. Other times, calibration drift of the instrument might be causing the unexpected readings reported by the operator. If this is suspected, then calibrating the equipment either in situ or back at the workshop with calibrated test equipment will help restore trust in the instrument reading. Component failure. This is a broad category and will take some investigation and testing. Either the input card, the input isolator or instrument itself failing could be the cause of an open circuit in your loop. With the multimeter, you can check if there is voltage upstream and downstream of the barrier. If there's no voltage downstream of the input isolator, then this would indicate a problem with the isolator. Replacing these often rail mounted items can be a quick fix. The instrument itself could have failed. A good way to test this is to replace the transmitter with a signal generator or do this with a heart field communicator and test the loop back to the HMI by simulating the 4 to 20 milliamps the transmitter would be modulating. If the rest of the loop is operating correctly, then instrument failure is your likely problem. This could be a whole host of issues and will be dependent on the specific instrument you are working on. If you still can't get the expected reading on the HMI, try injecting directly into the input card. If the problem still remains, then either the input card channel or the whole input card could have failed. If this is the case, then an input card replacement may be required. If injecting into the input card gives you the expected reading, then there could be an issue with the field wiring or the input isolator. Wiring issues. These are usually more common in harsh weather conditions and high vibration areas. Locations where cabling might sustain mechanical damage from other work activities also makes these failures more likely. Wiring issues may be loose terminations, especially on older or high vibration areas. These could also be either open circuit or high loop resistance. Using a multimeter to test for loop resistance can be a good way to notice high impedance readings or open circuit. Work methodically through the loop by disconnecting at various places to narrow down the fault. The wiring issue could be caused by physical damage to the wiring insulation that could be causing core-to-core -core contact or core-to-earth contact. 
This can lead to fuses, MCB or electrical protection issues. A good diagnostic test for this would be the use of an insulation resistance tester. These pieces of equipment apply a voltage to the cores and measure the resistance between the measured conductors. Always be sure you are familiar with the equipment and follow the safety precautions as the voltages these produce are high enough to cause shock. Also disconnect any sensitive equipment such as barriers or instruments before carrying out this kind of test. Blocked instrument impulse lines. If there is any blockage between the instrument and process it is measuring, this could cause flat or delayed readings. Again, this will depend on the type of instrument you're working on, but always keep in mind this failure mode, especially on liquid processes that might contain particulates. Fuse failure. Most loops provide protection from short circuit or excessive current load with a fuse. This loop fuse is designed to break down and no longer conduct electricity when the current in the loop is above the design rating of the fuse. Once blown, this will prevent any current flowing in your loop and the loop will show as open circuit. It's worth noting here that fuse failure isn't always the primary failure. The fuse is likely to have failed due to a short circuit or other component failure. You can check the fuse with a multimeter on a resistance setting, ensuring the fuse isn't open circuit. No power in the loop. If the local fuse is good, then there could be an issue with power upstream of the local fuse. The input loop may be powered by the PLC input card or some external 24 volt distribution via local MCBs or AC to DC power supplies. The power for the loop may have been lost. Check the loop for a suitable voltage, usually 24 volts DC with a multimeter. Check for tripped MCBs or power supply status LED lights. Hopefully, this gives you an insight into some of the most common failure modes you'll come across out there in industry. Can you think of any more? Write down in the comments below some of the issues you might have come across.